So today I'm just planting out some lettuces. Now these are not winter lettuces. This is a random packet of um, normal sort of spring summer growing lettuces that I, it was a very old, I think it was out of date, 2013. I shove them in and they've taken I think there's some little German stuff in here so I'm just planting them out now even though it's mid-September if I just get six weeks growth of them I'll be happy so I'm just putting them in this bed where I've pulled out the radishes um, <laughs> the main aim will just to be to get a few leaves for harvest for me if I get too many or if they start to go over I will just throw them with the, with the chickens so that's uh, easy chicken food but I don't obviously <laughs> Barry in there. Uh, I don't want these seedlings to go to waste so I'm gonna hope that we get a warmish September maybe a little bit of a uh, Indian summer in October and as I say if I can just get four five six weeks growth off these and get one crop I'll be happy before they go over. You know what time it is? It's compost time! So today I am cleaning out the compost. It's probably the last time of the year actually because from obviously October, November, creepy crawlies, frogs, slow worms, hedgehogs even, that sort of thing are going to be starting to dig into compost heap to hibernate. So I don't want to then dig it out in the winter and disturb the hibernation. So today I'm basically going to take all of this nice composted stuff out, <laughs> shove it in these, uh, these buckets ready for spreading on the beds and then put all of this crap back in. Um, I'm gonna water, once I've taken some of this out, I'm gonna water it. I'm gonna put this back on and I'm gonna water it again, get a lot of moisture in there. But you can see there are tons of bugs in there. The wood lice are doing a great job of eating all that rotten material and breaking it down for me. So I'm gonna get some of this goodness from this compost heap back onto the garden. Well, after that dismal start to the year with the tomatoes where all those flowers got um, frizzled, I have ended up with a not bad harvest. So, look, I mean, look at the size of this. This is Alicante um, and this is my beefsteak variety. Um, so I've just actually, these could probably do with a couple more days on the vine just to uh, ripen up. But I've just taken off some leaves to let some more light through. Um, and I've just taken off, again, more leaves up this side. But this is the crop that I've just taken. I mean, that is not bad considering uh, the issues I've had with tomatoes this year. Um, so we've got some Alicante, so this is a nice, a nice round, lovely looking thing. Oh, yum. And then, oh, I'm losing one. And then these are beefsteak. And I have found with the beefsteak, they do tend to split a little bit. Um, there was a huge one in here. Let's get this baby out. And you can see it split a little bit, but it's a nice tomato. Very happy. So here's an update on the little quail chicks. Uh, so they're two weeks old. I'm just about to clean them out. Um, Cause you, as you can see, it's quite poopy in there. Um, so we're gonna clean them out. I just wanted to show you them before I disturb them. Now the, their brooder plate isn't actually on anymore, I've turned it off, but as you all know, quails like to boing. Um, and so I've left it in there because they actually go under there in the daytime and kind of just sleep and huddle. So I think it gives them a little bit of protection. Are you gonna? And you can see they like to hang out on top of their brooder plate, hence poop. So yeah, we need to do a big, a big clean out today, don't we, everybody? And then here are the little Chinese quail. So when I talk about boinging, boinging quail, these guys boing even more. You can see the top of her head there is where she smashed it under the top of the cage. So actually what I've done is I've fastened some bubble wrap. So now when they boing up, they're a little bit protected and hopefully that will stop any more accidents. So that's the Chinese quail. They're sailing in well, other than that, they seem to be paired okay. So now I'm just gonna get on to cleaning out these. Oh, look at you with your big wings. Cleaning out these uh, poopy, smelly quailies. It is a beautiful day here and I am uh, harvesting sunflowers. 
Um, so I've had these lovely sunflowers out. Um, I've cut some for cut flowers, um, but they're all starting to go over now. And as you can see here, this one is really starting to go over. So these are the old flowers. You can rub them off. And then these are all the seeds underneath. So I'm harvesting them. I'm just cutting the flower off. Um, you can wait longer until all of this has dropped off and it's gone really dry, but once it gets so dry, you'll obviously lose seeds because they'll start dropping out. So it's probably best to harvest it this time. Rub this off, just cut it off the back and then put it in a uh, sort of cool, dry place. Allow it to really, really dry out. The flower itself will start to curl back on itself and then the seeds will start popping out. And then you can use them for your birds, for wild birds. You can feed them to yourself. You can try and grow them as microgreens or you could even save them for next year and then grow more sunflowers. So another way that I earn a little bit of income for uh, the small holding is actually breeding pet birds. Um, so you might have seen a few weeks ago, um, I actually went to an auction and I sold some zebra finches which outsold my hens at the time. Um, and now we're coming into winter and so it's the time to stop breeding chickens, um, but you can breed pet birds inside all year round. So I've had uh, these two pair um, in separate cages. So we've got uh, Venus, Pluto, Io and Sunny. These are a pair and these are a pair. They've been in separate cages for about six months and they've all been feeding each other, going in the nest boxes. Um, Venus and Pluto have been mating, um, but no eggs. And so because they're a gre gregarious bird and they like being in the colony system, I've decided to clean out the um, the flight, bring it inside, and pop them all in together. Um, so this was actually on its side, so that was the base, uh, and I was using its chicks. Um, but it is actually an indoor flight that I had as a kid. So I've cleaned it out, I've got the nest boxes in, and I'm hoping that by having these lot all together, we might get some babies soon. Although last night Venus has uh, somehow pulled one of her claws out. So you can see that there's blood on this perch here. Um, which wasn't a great start, was it, Venus? But fingers crossed, we can get baby budgies. Well, I think it's fair to say I haven't quite cracked turnips. Uh, this is the first year of growing them and they've come up luscious, as you can see. Maybe a bit too luscious. Um, maybe there's too much fertiliser in here. So I've got Snowball and Purple Top Milan. Now I'm picking some of them for dinner today and some of these... Look at that. That is actually perfect. So they're only supposed to be um, sort of golf ball shape. There was another nice one in here that I found. Again. Really, really perfect. Lovely little purple top Milan turnip. So I am picking a few of these because they are ready. Have we got any more? Oh, there's a nice one there as well. <laughs> so, good, good harvest. But look at the snowballs. Nothing. I'm not even going to pull them up yet, but... That is not how they should be. They should be rounded, and I haven't got a single one of this snowball variety again here. So uh, more work needs to be done on growing these turnips. I think the soil is maybe too fertile, and so they're not bulking up properly. Um, but if you've got any tips or ideas, please let me know.